Hello, I am Jody Jax from Broadway Clay, and I am here showing you your weekend workshop, which is now a take-home workshop. You will have two different choices for wind chimes. So one will require cookie cutters, and this one does not require cookie cutters. So when you come in, on the outside of the store, there is a shelf, and you will have a bag, and the bag will have your name up here, and then I'm going to show you what's inside the bag. Inside the bag will be a skewer and a hunk of clay. And what we'd like for you to do is to go ahead when you are finished and put these things back in the bag that is already labeled so we can make sure we get your name on the back of things and we don't get things lost in the studio. So other things that you could use at home are, you could use a table knife, a spoon, a fork, or if you have some paper clips laying around, those are good to put details in too. So over here is what you're going to be making and it will hang like this. So they're all going to hang so that they're right underneath each other. You will be creating 10 of these little beads that you will not glaze. Do not glaze these beads. You will not glaze these beads. We will fire them. You will tie string around this and one is going to go inside of here. And then the other one will hang a little bit lower so that you will hear it chiming back and forth. Or it's totally up to you how you want to put these together. If you put these together a little tighter, it's actually going to knock on these. So you are now ready to get your clay out. We have given you a pound and a half of clay. You need to make five balls that are large to small, and then you're going to need a hand, a hand, uh, a little handful of clay so that you can make your 10 beads. So, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take, and each time I pull off, I'm going to try to make it a little bit smaller. That leaves me a lot of clay, so I may wanna add a little bit to this one and this one. Then you're going to take your balls of clay, and what we do is you're squeezing them with your hands and you are going to just kind of gently smack them together until you don't see any kinds of lines on here. I want to warn you, this clay is water-based. If you take this clay and you pound it out of a pancake, pancake on your table, and then you take it and roll it up in a ball, it is not going to work. Do not play with the clay before you start making your project. You need to immediately start making your project. If you have some left over at the end, then you can go ahead and start playing with it. But you don't wanna do that in the beginning. It will dry out. Now, you can reconstitute it by adding a little bit of water, but that's something that we are probably much better at than you're going to be at home. All right, so I have my five balls of clay now. There's a little bit bigger and they go smaller. If I wanted, I have quite a bit of clay left over. I probably want this for my 10 balls. I'm gonna add this one to, mm, little to this one and a little to my other one. We are giving you clay that is pretty soft. So you can't always do this if your clay isn't soft enough, but this clay should be. But I really wanna knock it down. I'm gonna start off by making those 10 small balls of clay and you're just gonna pinch off a piece, roll it in your hand, and you want 10 of them. And what are you not gonna do with these again? You are not going to glaze these. We do not have a way to fire these if they are glazed.
Okay, so I have now laid 10 of these out. These are really wet, so I'm gonna set them aside, and when I'm done with the rest of my project, I'm gonna show you how to poke holes in them. So you are going to be making pinch pots. So it's, it is one of the most primitive form of pots. You see this happen a lot in um, Africa. I see this a lot in Native American pottery. And there's even some potters today who most, mostly work with pinch pots. So I'm poking my thumb through there, but you do not want to poke through the bottom. There is probably a thumb thickness where my thumb comes down. You're gonna take this and pinch it. You do not want your pinch pot to be really skinny or really, really wide. Actually, wider would be better than skinny because then your other pinch pots will definitely fit under it. And I am gently pinching between my fingers. If you needed to, you could probably look up another pinch pot video which would show you a very up close. But I'm literally pinching my clay, okay? Something you can also do if it gets too big is I lay mine in my hand and I will press this towards my hand. I am trying to make sure that I don't get the edge of this really, really thin. At this point, I'm going to pinch out a little bit. Yours do not need to look exactly like mine. It is fine for everyone's to look a little bit different, okay? So here's my first pinch pot. I'm gonna set this down to let it dry up a little bit and I'm gonna start on my next one. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward through most of this but you can see me make each one of these. Okay, I'm just coming up and I'm finishing my last little pinch pot here. And you will have noticed as I went along that I was trying to make sure that they would kind of fit inside of each other a little bit. You might wanna make yours more of a bell shape or you might wanna make them a little flatter. At this point, it would be great if you set them aside um, probably about a half an hour and they're going to firm up a little bit. So I'm gonna change mine out With these over here, these ones have been setting out for a while. They are much firmer. You can tell they aren't floppy anymore. At this point, if you were to pick these up and you were to bang them against something, they are going to break. So if it's a major disaster, let us know and we will switch clay out for you. But you do need to be careful with these. But they will get much firmer as you go along. These have actually been sitting out for about three hours. But what I can do at this part, at this point, is if I wanted to smooth them out, they're much easier to smooth out. If you had some little stamps at home that you really liked, you could gently Put a little stamp onto yours so I once again I'm smoothing it out with my finger as I press on this side I'm supporting the underside and then if you wanted at this point where it's still this is called leather hard you could even put some little stamps on there if you like so don't go crazy with them. You don't want to smash them. Now, I'm going to show you what to do with each of these little balls of clay. The reason you have a skewer, a skewer is so that you can poke a hole in these. And what you're gonna do is just take it, kind of twist it back and forth. I'm gonna go back through the other side. And if it's got any pieces sticking up, I'm gonna gently put those down. So you wanna do that with each one of these. And, of course, you want to poke a hole in the top. So gently go down, 
you probably want to go back inside gently press that down and go through again to make sure that your skewer will fit through what after we fire these we will actually send home um, some fishing wire for you so that you can hang your own and i will do a supplemental video to this that i will post up on our youtube channel the next step is glazing okay you will also have a glaze kit in your bag so these are not acrylic paints um they are not watercolors if you wanted we could just give your pieces back to you and you can paint them with acrylic paints or watercolors these are actually going to be turned into a glaze so if you see these these used to be those kind of paints and now they are glossy so this is a glaze it actually turns into glass when we fire it which i want you to notice is we did not fire the back of these in our kiln if we were to fire glaze it becomes glassy and sticky to our kiln shelves so we do not fire whatever is going to set on the kiln shelf in the kiln so this is a little different but on your pieces i do not want you to glaze anything on the bottom because we will set them in the kiln like this so the whole bottom is going to be touching the kiln so i would first add some kind of design on the outside you could paint them with flowers you could paint stripes you could paint polka dots on here um as these set out they're actually going to come to a bone dry phase and it will be very dry the water will come out of these they are extremely breakable so be careful at that point when you set these back in the bag you might want to lay them definitely back in the paper or wrap them up with a little tissue or something these are simply going to pop off Megan, would you get me a couple paint brushes? I forgot my paint brushes. Now that we think we will be including a paint brush in your kit too. Thank you. So you will have a paint brush in there. You are welcome to use yours at home. And if I took this, I simply just dip it in here and I'm going to paint it on, making sure I don't paint the bottom. The more layers you paint, the more opaque the glaze will be. If I painted them like this, they're actually going to just be kind of like a watercolor. They will be a little transparent. You do not need to cover every surface of this pot. We will actually be dipping these in a clear glaze for you after we bisque fire them and they will actually, you will actually see the color of the clay, which is kind of a creamy color. Some of our clay is white and some of it's just a bit off white. So you could do something like this. You could go back and put little dots in there. You could write your name around there. Anything you like would be perfectly fine. Now, if you get something on there and you don't like it, get a little sponge that's damp, not totally wet, and you could actually wipe that off of there and paint it a different color. We will be going live on Saturday on Facebook, so you can check the times. We will send them to you. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you're having fun at home.